behalf of Marianne and all the family and friends, I welcome you to this service honoring Jake Weavers. Uh, Jake was a person of uh, great character, great wisdom, great faith, and great love. And so we have much to celebrate today. And yet our hearts are, are broken and heavy, even though that we know that Jake is looking down from our heavenly home. So hear these words of comfort from Scripture, first from the Apostle Peter, who wrote, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And the Apostle Paul said, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The psalmist commended us with God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And Isaiah the prophet said this, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right arm. And finally, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, said this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Friends, we are here in God's protective shelter, knowing that we are free to share our grief and even our tears because we've lost someone that we love dearly. We're here to face some of our emptiness because we love Jake. And we're here though to know that God cares. And we're here to be as a church, as a family of faith, as sisters and brothers of Christ, regardless of what church is your home. We're here to celebrate and give thanks for the life of Jake Weavers because he lived a great and long life and have a wonderful, wonderful, loving relationship with Mary Ann. And we're here to reshape our lives with things to give thanks for. So will you join me in prayer now? Holy God, whose ways are not our ways, and whose thoughts are not our thoughts, grant that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us with sighs too deep for human words. Heal our wounded hearts made heavy by our sorrow, and through the veil of our tears and the silence of our emptiness, assure us again that ear has not heard nor eyes seeing, nor even human imagination envision what you prepared for those who love you. We pray for your comfort and your peace and your love in a very special way for Marianne and all the friends and family through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I invite you to join in singing what a day that will be. Uh, you may remain standing for the song.
I want to take a moment and share the words that Marianne beautifully put together honoring Jake and then share some memories with you and then a letter and a, and a word as well. Jacob E. Weavers, 94 of Lafayette, Indiana, passed away on January 5th at University Hospital in Indianapolis. Jake was born February 21st, 1926 to Theodore Conrad Weavers and Charlotte Margaret Bestel Weavers. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. He married Mary Ann Winter Weavers February 21st, 1986 in Lafayette. He left high school at age 16 to attend Purdue University on the Kitty Cruise program. Jake then left his freshman year at Purdue University to enlist in the U.S. Navy during World War II as a dental technician before his 18th birthday. He was stationed in Boston, Massachusetts. Following discharge from the United States Navy in June 1946, he returned to Purdue University where he graduated with a B.S. degree in bacteriology and an M.S. degree in animal physiology. He began his Ph.D. program at the University of Pittsburgh School of Public Health. He earned an MS in public health and a PhD in physiology in 1954. A highlight of his time at Pittsburgh was to have lunch with Dr. Jonas Salk. Jake began his tenure at Purdue University in 1954, retiring June 30, 1991 as Professor Emeritus, teaching 37 years. Jake mentored many graduate students over the years and was recognized as an expert in the study of bat hibernation and temperature regulation. The Weavers are members of Emmanuel United Church of Christ, where Jake has served as president of the consistory, deacon, elder, trustee, and taught Sunday school. Jake had a strong belief that one's word is one's bond. Jake loved the many activities, especially the outdoors, plants, and trees. He and Marianne liked to walk in the new snow to check up for animal tracks. Down the Grand Canyon on mules, dog sledding for a week in Eli, Minnesota, off to the Iditarod in Alaska, a wilderness trip on horseback in the Smokies are just a few of his and Marianne's favorite trips. In September 2012, Jake attended the honor flight to Washington, D.C. He was raised at Master Mason, June 1947. He's only one year from being awarded 75 years as a Mason. At Lafayette Lodge 123, he served as Worshipful Master in 2003 and 2008. He served as worthy patron in 1994 in Hope Chapter 5, Order of the Eastern Star with Marianne as worthy matron. He served as state president of Masonic High 12, as well as president of the local chapter. He also is a member of the Shriners International, Scottish Rite, and New York Rite Bodies. Jake is survived by wife Marianne, a son Jacob Top Weavers in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and grandson Lennon Weavers in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, as you know, that is just so much more to Jake's life than that. Just to share some of the memories, Jake, of course, was raised in Chicago, Illinois. His dad was an engineer. Growing up in the city, Jake never learned to ride a bicycle, never went barefoot. But he spent summers at his grandfather's home in Jackson, Illinois. His grandfather had a plumbing business, so Jake learned the trade. Jake was actually named after his two grandfathers, Jacob and Elmer. Marianne said that it's a good thing that they named Jake his first name rather than Elmer because he didn't like Elmer very much. <laughs> his mother's family was large with uh, nine boys and two girls and some not much older than Jake, so Jake was treated as one of the brothers. So he sort of grew up in a big family there. Jake left high school at 16 and went to Purdue. After a year at Purdue, Jake turned 17 and decided to, turn to join the Navy during World War II. He served as a dental assistant in Boston for two and a half years. And after the war, Jake returned to Purdue and received a BS in bacteriology, a master's in microbiology before going to the University of Pittsburgh for a master's in public health and a PhD in physiology. Jake was known for being an expert in bats and we called on him a number of times we had bats in our belfry here at Emmanuel. <laughs> that, that leaves a lot of room for commentary. Uh, Mary Ann, and Jake met when she was a TA in his course at Purdue and then an instructor. They went on their first date and saw 101 Dalmatians. Turns out they're both dog lovers. They had a lot of dogs, no, not 101, but quite a few. Not sure of the number, Marianne could tell you. Despite the age difference, they developed a deep and loving relationship and got married here at Emmanuel. There's some beautiful photos of that way back when. Marianne is famous for saying age is just a number. 
They got married on Jake's 60th birthday in 1990, and Marianne says so Jake would never forget their anniversary day. Good move, Marianne. They set an example to all of us about how to live life and marriage to the fullest. They both love animals, and someone once asked Jake why he was, what he was doing raising ducks, chickens, and geese at the age 60. He responded famously, because I didn't do it at 50. <laughs> They enjoyed everyday life, walking the dogs or taking drives, but they also had a love of adventure that took them on numerous trips, including over Amagao in Europe, where they saw the Passion Play, which only takes place once every 10 years. They also took a wilderness vacation on horseback in the Smoky Mountains. Jake never rode a bike and didn't know much what he was doing about a horse, so for their anniversary, Marianne gave Jake horseback riding lessons. They also took a cruise through the Panama Canal, explored Prince Edward Islands in Newfoundland, rode mules on Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon. Marion Ann said it was, a, it was a big challenge because he didn't know how to ride a bike, but she got him forced back riding lessons and said that helped there. Uh, they went on a rafting on the New River in West Virginia and went to Alaska three times. Uh, they even went dog sledding in Minnesota and went to Alaska in February. No one goes in February except for the Iditarod, the great famous dog sled race. One time they even had dinner waterside, and Marianne claims it was the best dinner ever and enjoyed salmon fishing in the best fishing place in the world there in Alaska. Once they found a moose antler, and Jake wanted to take it home so bad that he found out he had to take it in parts to get it out of the country, and so they sawed it into three parts and stuffed it in their luggage, not really realizing how much it would smell to high heaven, which it did. <laughs> uh, it's rumored that the uh, luggage compartment in a Canadian airline still stinks with moose antler, so we don't know about that. Uh, Jake was a mason and was proud of that and we had a nice service prior to this one. Jake once lost his Scottish right ring in the yard and didn't know how to find it, but a week later, uh, there was a seven inch snow and Baldo, their dog, was scratching the snow and happened to kick it up. And there, there was Jake's Scottish right Masonic ring. And Mary points to that and says, it's one of the many blessings in life that God just blessed them with. And so, uh, what are the chances of that, she said. Marianne was fond of saying that, she, that uh, she never touched anything older than Jake. So one day, Jake took her to Delphi Park, where there's a rock known to be over 70 million years, and said, go ahead and touch it. And uh, he said, now you can't say I'm the oldest thing that you ever touched. <laughs> oh, Jake's wisdom and faith are well known. He taught the older Sunday school class back in the day here at Emmanuel. And he was also the past president of the consistory. consistory, served as an elder, deacon, and trustee. He even helped recently uh, with the VBS craft to help kids make lifeboats. He and Marianne did that uh, just uh, two years ago. Uh, not long before he got sick, he visited a doctor at 94 years old. And Jake asked the doctor, he said, how often do you see someone who's 94? And the doctor said, well, I usually do see people who are 94, but usually they can't move, and if they move, then they can't think, and it's really unusual to, for me to see someone who's 94 who can think and move. Jake was blessed with a long life. We always want more years and treasure those years, but he could think very well, remain sharp as a tack all of his life and could move until the very end, and that's so, so much to treasure. Uh, he was lucky, they are lucky, and so even through our tears today, we know that they had, uh, that Jake had a long, blessed life, and they had a wonderful, lasting, and loving marriage. Uh, Jake used to say about Marianne that he loved that she made him laugh, and she does. What a wonderful sense of humor. Frankly, they both have a wonderful sense of humor, you were, Jake's was just real dry, and you had to listen for it. My personal experience here, of course, I didn't know Jake all those years that um, he was at Purdue, but I always loved seeing Jake and Marianne at the worship service. They were always focused and attentive, faithful in their attendance up until the pandemic, of course, 
And then also at uh, Men's Brotherhood, uh, we get together uh, before the pandemic. We will one day again, but uh, Jake was one of those guys that uh, everybody stopped to listen and lean forward when Jake was talking because we knew that he was a person with experience and wisdom and insight. We so much appreciate that. And I know that we will all treasure the memories of Jake in our hearts and lives, and that he's had a tremendous impact in our lives. And Marianne, we just um, are praying for you, wishing you all the love in the world, that even through the tears, that you would treasure the memories of Jake, and uh, our love and prayers are with you. I want to share um, a letter from Gus Weavers, who cannot be here, he and his wife, because of the pandemic, but he wrote this, and I want to share it now. Jacob E. Weavers and my father, Herman A. Weavers, were second cousins. Born in 1926 and 1925, respectively, nine months apart in age, but hardly knew each other, even though one grew up in Lafayette, the other in Kokomo, only 45 miles apart. The Weavers family connection on my line had been served to a certain extent, the result of my grandfather passing accidentally at age 26 in 1927. Thus, I've always felt fortunate that due to an interest in family history, I learned in the late 1970s of a branch of the family that was yet living in Lafayette, where the German community of which our immigrant folks settled back in the early 1860s. The summer of 1979 was a first trip back to Indiana from Nebraska for us and included a stop to become acquainted with members of the family. There just seemed to be an immediate respect for and shown by the Weaver folks. Jake and Marianne, his father Ted, as well as aunts and uncles, who were fortunately still living. It was an opportunity to learn much that I never would have about the family and its generations that preceded us, both in Lafayette and in Germany. It was during that visit, as well as that summer that followed, that a significant and meaningful relationship was forged. In the years since, my wife and I made numerous trips back to Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, essentially every three years to visit family members of mine, a good part of those trips has centered around time to be spent with Jake and Marianne. An extraordinary, rewarding friendship and bond has been the result. As I reflect, there was a very little with which Jake and I disagreed, no matter what the topic. We got along beautifully, and there was always much respect shown both ways. It was readily apparent, and I commented on it often, that much about Jake reminded me of my own father. Their philosophies and ideas were very similar. They were of the same character and constitution with quite comparable personalities. As, as though of you uh, knew them can attest, Jake was a man of unquestionable integrity, with quiet, admirable intellect, a curiosity about interest in many academic subjects, certainly the biology and physical sciences. He was well-read and learned man. He showed much reverence of the outdoors, plant life, the water, and the soil themselves, the love for animals in all forms that he and Marianne had shown has been nothing but exemplary. Of note has always been his love for his family, particularly Marianne, his parents and grandparents and others. He will, without fail, spoke of them with much favor. He was a relatively quiet man, as was my father, but certainly not around family or friends. When it came time to be serious, what they said was often witty or philosophical with meaning, and one paid attention to what they were saying. This was accompanied with a great sense of humor as well, but many times a bit dry or abstract with their purpose. Jake was a prideful man, and oh boy did he have pride in his family, his heritage, the city of Lafayette itself, where he spent the major portion of his life. Purdue University, Unbelievable pride in the academic reputation of the school, which he himself enhanced through the many years he spent as a professor of physiology, books he authored, his church was very important to him, and was his community and his country. And then there was the Masonic involvement toward which he made quite a commitment his whole adult life. For some 74 years, a tremendous amount of pride in organization's purpose and its achievements. There have been a good many fond me memories from our interactions with Jake and Marianne. We are so thankful for the opportunities to share some of them. I remember the days out and back to many sites with which we were not familiar or had not seen many of local and historical interests. Much time was taken in the evening after a good meal, talking until late in the den, when sipping a bit of wine, quite often wine that he had made or maybe that I bought on one occasion. On one outing of note, we knew of their interest in frequenting the Indiana State Fair. 
to which many years were paid more than one visit. Our plans to spend time there were precluded by the wind shear storm that caused much havoc the day before we were to attend in 2011. So we looked toward making a day of it during our subsequent trip in 2014. One stop to them that summer, unbeknownst to us, was only a few days after hospital stay for Jake of most of the week. But even with that considered, he was enthused to drive with us to the fairgrounds where he saw much of the know, friends of theirs, ate good food, a number of hours in heat and humidity, making what we knew was a bit of a sacrifice for him a few months from age 89. As my wife and I were unable to journey to Lafayette as planned this past summer, I thought it imperative to take advantage of the opportunity to at least talk in the meantime with Jake Marianne as well as I could by phone so that we could revisit memories and recheck details about pupils and events from families past. The last time for that, unfortunately, was November 30th. He was the lone remaining family member on either side of my family, with a connection to the generations that came before us. As my father passed a couple of years prior, I am hoping that two have now made up for some of the lost time to get reacquainted, to speak to each other and with each other. Without his voice, his smile, his laugh, his very presence, and all else made him special, it would be difficult to cope with his loss. It has already been so tough to say goodbye. Jake, you lived a good, long, and worthy life in so many ways, but you have nonetheless left us too soon. We love you so much, and we have just begun to miss you. Amen. Gus Weavers, Nebraska. We're going to take a moment now, and Gary Gangler, who is uh, often referred to Jake as uh, something of a father to him, is going to share a few words and memories. My wife asked me, she said, did you jot down a few notes? I said, no. I said, there's so much I could say about Jake that I could go on for at least, what do I have, three hours? <laughs> ask my ask your wife. Turn off the bells. <laughs> <laughs> to the young men in the congregation, I want to give you a secret to my success in life and in business and in relationships. I have adopted in my life many mentors. These are men that I have selected, I have watched carefully, and tried to replicate things they did. In my farming career, it was a gentleman that passed away some 24 years ago. His name was J.C. DePlenick. J.C. said one day, he says, you know, I speak to you like a father and you listen just like a son. I said, what's your point? Jake Weavers was my mentor in my personal life as to be a man. I grew up with Todd. Todd and I went all through uh, Sunday school together. Confirmation. My first recollection of Jake is when he took Todd and I down to Lake Holiday to go fishing. I, a country boy, and Jake, a city boy. We caught bluegills. We filled up a five-gallon bucket, and I'll never forget, uh, Jake was cleaning those fish for us to eat. Todd moved, and I kind of adopted. I always had this drawing towards Jake. My coming back to Emmanuel years ago, we even rekindled that relationship. When we did a hog roast here many years ago, Jake helped me and our bond grew even stronger. I really think if Jake and Marianne would have had a child, it probably would have been me. And Jake probably would have said, you're so much like your mother. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Marianne? <laughs> because Jake and I grew together, I think because Marianne and I are so much alike. Jake, this picture here is Jake Weavers. He's very quiet and sat there about yay far out. Had his legs crossed and his arms crossed and just constantly smiled. No matter what Marianne did, he just smiled. No matter what Gary did, he just smiled. And I think we did a lot of that. I had the pleasure, young man, 
of escorting him to many Masonic uh, events. I only have one regret that Indianapolis is only 60 miles away because he and I would drive to Indianapolis and all the way there he would tell me of the great things and the wonderful things they had done. He told me one year that he says, you know, I never finished high school. I dropped out. And I looked at him and I said, you're a college professor. What? <laughs> he said, yeah, at 16 I didn't do it. We found out earlier the Navy had his, his date of birth in 1925. He lied about his age to join the Navy. That was Jay. He's a very humble man. He was never boastful. He never gloated. He always accepted. He was such a gentle, accepting gentleman. He just wanted just to be with him. I don't know why he wouldn't. Loved him dearly. I said he was one of my adopted fathers. So young men, your challenge in life is love. Love to the older men. Let them be mentors to you. Now let me caution you. There's one drawback. I always said the sword cuts both ways, to the good and to the bad. But that, with a hard, sorrowful heart, I say goodbye to my friend. That's the price you pay for having deep love in your heart, is that it cuts deep. But I am blessed because of Jake Weavers. I am blessed of my adopted mother. And now the congregation's going to go, that's Mary Ann's son. It's got to be. <laughs> Thank you for living. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And I would like to remind everyone that there will be times you visit with Mary Ann, calling the military honors in the gathering space out there. And you can also write her notes. I know so many of you have some great memories to share. So thank you, Gary. Uh, I invite you to join in singing Peace Like a River. <laughs>
few moments and share a few words of hope with you this morning. Sometimes when we're looking to honor a loved one, it's a struggle to know what scripture verse to share, but it was not at all with Jake. Um, right away, uh, what came to mind to me, since Jake was such a person of wisdom and faith, was Ecclesiastes chapter 3. A great book of wisdom, perhaps the greatest book of wisdom ever written. And so, listen to these selections from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to reap. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I see the burden that God has laid on the human race. He's made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set a trinity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do what is good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil. That is a gift from God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away. God does it so that people will fear him. Boy, what profound words. And I just think of Jake when I read this. And you probably may recall that that song of wisdom that Solomon put together from all of his wisdom, one of the wisest persons ever, was also a top number one pop hit back in 1965 by The Birds. Uh, I don't know what Jake was doing in 1965, but he knew it. But even greater, the wisdom brings through the years. So I'd like to invite you to walk through and to think about Jake's life a little bit. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to reap, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. You know, Jake really knew the seasons of life and knew one of the great secrets of life which is discover and to know and to lean into the truth that every season does have its blessing and to know how to enjoy each and every day in life. Jake knew the childhood seasons of life and he grew up as a child in Chicago and knowing all the interesting things the city has to offer, but then he knew the respirator, the way to slow down in more of a country setting with his grandfather in the summers in uh, Jacksonville, Illinois. He learned a plumber's trade, in addition to many other kinds of things, which is just amazing. He knew how to enjoy the simple moments in life. He and Marianne raised uh, ducks and chickens and geese, and they loved older dogs, and uh, enjoyed a, a quiet walk. And uh, he knew how to laugh, too, as well as cry. Uh, he used to say that Marianne made him laugh, and he knew how to laugh and enjoy those times. And it says this as well, as uh, thinking about his uh, seasons as a teacher and a professor, part of his life at the Masons and his life here, the family of faith at Emmanuel. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Oh my gosh, don't we know that right now, how hard that is. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away or even maybe cast a fishing line into the stream for some fish. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. One of the many things about the chapters of Jake's life is he spent one of those chapters in World War II serving and willingly left Purdue 
at 17 after a successful year and went and signed up. He was impatient. I learned previously that he applied to the Navy to be a fighter pilot, got impatient for the response and went and signed up, ended up as a dental assistant in Boston, Massachusetts, and then found out that he got acceptance uh, for being uh, in the pilot school of the Navy and wanted to jump over, and they said, no, you're here, you're staying. So um, he served wherever he could and wanted to serve this country during a very difficult time. He was always a proud patriot and was really delighted to be part of the honor flight and uh, has this wonderful t-shirt down here as well as uh, the hat and uh, we celebrate his patriotism and is willing to serve and sacrifice. He's part of the great generation and boy, they deserve that title of the great generation as they slip away. People like Jake, we just wonder uh, about the foundation of our country and I hope we will uh, stand up and to serve that kind of commitment, that kind of service, and that kind of sacrifice. Jake and Marianne enjoyed the seasons of life as a uh, husband and his father, and they enjoyed all the vacations. My goodness, uh, if I could take half the vacations that Jake and Marianne did in the older seasons of life, they had such, you know, sort of uh, chutzpah to do all that uh, horseback riding in the Smoky Mountains, even though Jake. Uh, didn't learn to horseback ride until late in life, uh, going to over Omega uh, for the passion play that only happens every 10 years, to take the mule ride down the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon. I've walked part of that. You know, that's hard enough walking. Okay, there's some really, you know, straight down areas of that. So to be on a mule, and to be willing to do that, that's just uh, a lot of hoots. But and he owed a lot of it to Marianne. She's got that kind of a brave, a daring a spirit and fun-loving. Uh, they went whitewater rafting in the New River in West Virginia. Went to China. I saw the photos from China to the Forbidden City, and I'm guessing also the Great Wall. And just and I, he even ventured some incredible uh, meals, including a 100-year-old egg. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> and Marianne said, if you eat that, don't ever complain about my cooking again. So, they went to Alaska three times. Uh, once after having gone, learned to dog sled in Minnesota, they said they just have to do the idea runs. They went to Alaska in February. We all know that you go in the spring or the fall or summer in Alaska, not the winter, but they went in February for that great race and just amazing. Uh, Jake also enjoyed the simpler pleasures of life, like fishing and like walking with Marianne, learning to appreciate when to, to weep and when to laugh, when to enjoy each and every day of life, and to realizing that life itself is sacred and other lives are sacred, and that you have a moment to share your life with others, the time that you took mentoring Gary, and really regarding him as a son, and um, knowing all the mischief that he could get into, <laughs> he really is a lot like Marianne. Uh, the writer goes on to say this. God has made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find their satisfaction in all their toil. This is a gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing taken away from it. God does this so that people will fear him. Jake was a very, very smart person, as well as a very, very wise person. And despite all of his knowledge and all of his learning and all of his degrees, he knew there was a creator. He respected creation. And he knew about the sanctity of life and the sacredness of each and every day. He knew that truth that God has made everything beautiful in its time, including his beloved Mary Ann, and all the time they shared together. Jacob was a person of great integrity. He said often, your word is your bond, and he lived that way. He knew that eternity was set in the human heart by God, and that no one can fathom it from beginning to end. We all, and I knew this personally, as all those at our men's brotherhood knew, that when we sat around the table with Jake, that he always had a pearl of wisdom for us, uh, whether it was the events happening 
uh, in the day, in the countryside, or in the country politic, Jake had a word of wisdom, Jake had a perspective, and Jake had faith that was woven together with all that, that made him a person of just, uh, that you wanted to be around, that you wanted to have him pour his life into you. His days were too short, even at 94 years, and so we share your tears and uh, your treasured time with Jake Marianne, and we pray for you and all the family and all of us whose lives and hearts are broken, but we know that Jake today is with our Lord. I'm going to close with these words from John 14, which I love so much in times like this. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, when I told you that I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that where I am, you may be also. You know the way to the place that I am going. I know, and you know, that our Heavenly Father came and took Jake by the hand. And Marianne was able to share some moments in the week prior to Jake's passing and, and to read Psalm 23 and to know that God's grace is there and that God blesses us. And so today, as we think about Jake, I want to close with Psalm 23 uh, for a moment and to hear these words from the psalmist. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And this from the final part of John Denver's song that we played earlier. And some say love is holding on, and some say letting go. And some say love is everything, and some say they don't know. Perhaps love is like the mountains, full of conflict, full of change. Like a fire when it's cold outside, or the thunder when it rains. If I should live forever and all my dreams come true, my memories of love will still be of you. Marianne, Jake is on the other side of the journey, looking down on us, but sharing your tears, and with loving arms will one day greet you again. We join you in prayer. Let us remember, friends, what God's word has promised us. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we know that in everything God works for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And we are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. Their powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Merciful God, we thank you for your word. It is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We thank you especially that in the night of our grief and the shadows of our sorrow, we are not left to ourselves. We have the light of your promise to comfort and sustain us. And through our tears, give us the vision in faith, the consolation you intend. And in your mercy, grant us unfailing guidance by your saving word. And through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer, giver of life and conqueror of death, we praise you with humble hearts and faith in your great mercy and wisdom. We entrust Jake Weavers to your eternal care. We praise you for your steadfast love for him all the days of this earthly life. We thank you that he has crossed over and that it is your loving presence now and forevermore. That death itself is past and he is in the communion of the faithful with all those who have gone before. God of all mercies and comfort and tender love and compassion, embrace your sorrowing servants this day. We pray especially for Marianne and all friends and family. Be their refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Show them again the love of Christ and the peace that transcends all understanding. We pray for all of us, Lord. Help us to learn to treasure each and every day 
to learn the lessons of your word, to apply them even as Jake did. Be with us now as we celebrate and give thanks for Jake's life. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Provide us the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand for the commendation. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jake Weavers. Acknowledge that we humbly pray, a sheep of your own foe, a lamp of your own flock, and a son of your own redeeming. Receive him into your arms of everlasting mercy and blessed rest and everlasting peace into the company of the saints of light. Holy One, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, the light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of all people. Go forth the blessing of Almighty God, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, and the peace and power of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing, Because He Lives. Yeah. 